Namaste. Hi. Multidirectional knee placements, um, such as in the positions Padmasana, Swastikasana, or even the half Pajmasana, and the Siddhasana, yeah, they require a few techniques yeah, to prepare not just the knee joints, but also the hips, yeah, the low back. Um, and yes, um, although doable, you know, generally, you know, this position, especially the modifications, yeah, we still need to prepare not just those joints, but also the energetic anatomy. Right. And what do I mean when I say energetic anatomy? The hips and the spine, right. as well as, of course, the nasal cavity. Yeah. Um, before you practice um, energy channeling techniques such as pranayama, mudra, or even chanting, yeah, the physical body um, is ideally prepared. Because, yeah, um, the reality is we're using the body as a gateway for the energy. So, for today, let me share with you maybe two or three techniques yeah, of uh, preparing yeah, the lower body as well as a couple of techniques for opening the nasal cavity and the throat and the spine in general. All right, so multi-directional knee placements. Um, um, you may practice one or two of these techniques. So the first is the Matsya Kridasana. All right. This one, yeah, I've, I've given plenty of tutorials about this technique. And then while here, you rotate the knee around like this in circular motions, and this will, yeah, already, yeah, open the knee joints and then the hip joints, as well as relax, yeah, um, the pelvic floor, the pelvic cavity in general. And then breathing through this is also energetic. Yeah, the lungs can uh, absorb, yeah, really abundant flow of energy yeah, because of this gravitational encouragement yeah the uh, gravitational pull yeah the weight bearing position of this asana relaxes the lower back yeah opens the thoracic cavity and allow the lungs to open more all right so this one is uh, the first technique uh, of course you uh, need to practice yeah both sides um Maybe you can stay there for like two or three minutes per side. Yeah. And then before you change side, yeah, you might do yeah, spine stretching and then circle the hips around. All right. And then you might do like what? Um, a minute of this position, yeah, movement, and then just fanning yeah, the hips the side to side. All right. You can even do... yeah. Yeah, the uh, sacrolumbar stretch yeah, by moving your top knee yeah, in a swinging concentric motion. All right, so those are two techniques. Yeah, Masakli Dasana, the flipping fish, and the reclining hip and knee circles. Okay, uh, third technique. All right. Of course, we need to prepare the spine in general. Yeah, especially the region of the lungs is where we're gonna be flowing the breath. And then for this technique, yeah, I would suggest you do uh, spinal extension or back bend. All right, and you don't have to go really deep when it comes to back bend. You can just do what this, yeah, yeah, the supported locus position. You can just breathe through it, inhaling. And exhaling, loosen, inhale to lift the heart, and exhale to soften. Maybe do a minute of that, breathing in and out, and then breaking the flow by maybe doing a light flexion. Yeah, an easy flexion, the balasana. Okay. Yeah, if um, you have that yoga prop, yeah, you can yeah, place. Um, hold on. Yeah, I'll just get the. Yeah, but you don't have to purchase um, yoga prop. You can do what? These are like what? Stack of towels. You can just roll them into like, yeah, bolster. Yeah. And then what you do is to just let your spine 
you know, roll over it. Oh, this, this one feels good. No. Supported thoracic extension. And you can just stay here, what, maybe a minute or two. You're breathing, the heart opening the lungs. And exhale, soften. All right. You can even do them out side to side here. Uh, to lightly open yeah, the lateral part of the body. Yes, lateral extension. Good. All right. So, for me, yeah, um, those three techniques yeah, are more than enough yeah, <laughs> to prepare the hips and uh, your spine when it comes to uh, opening the energetic pathways. All right. Now, when it comes to yeah, preparing the knee joints as well as the lower back. Yeah, I would suggest maybe pick one of these three techniques I will be showing you. First, of course, is the what? This one, the Badakunasana. So you might just move the hips to a bit of a side to side. Yeah, you can even lightly flip the knees. Yeah, but I don't. Uh, normally do this uh, because I feel this one is quite um, too intense for my joints. So what I'll do is just do this. Good. Or you can do um, the cradle. Yeah, so just hook your arms under and then swaying your hips. Yeah, this is like, um, the sensation is like um, the Kandasana actually. Okay like that all right you can do what another is shift to one side and then vibrating the joints all right bending and then vibrating the joints all right and of course you need to prepare your ankles yeah you can do what um crossing one foot over the leg all right, and just yeah place your fingers yeah, between the spaces of your toes and then circle around pointing and flexing and circle around. You can do this like on uh, your transition yeah, before changing to yeah, the, yeah, the swinging leg motion. Okay, and then you do now your um, cross-setting position. All right, yeah. half Padmasana, yeah. take one leg inside and then cross the other on top. Yeah. If um, the knee is not comfortable, yeah, you can just place something under that top knee. All right. The half padmasana doable. You might also yeah, place something under your buttock there, like an elevation. Okay, so your hips can yeah relax forward, and then here you can open your lower back in a neutral position. And then you can do your pranayama, you can do your chanting, you can do your what stillness as well. All right, next would be, uh, of course, the sukhasana. Yeah. yeah, but for some people, this might be intense for an ambition because this actually requires um, um, more multi dimensional uh, movement. Yeah, than the Padmasana. The half Padmasana is actually more doable than the Sukhasana. Sukhasana yeah, is called easy pose, but it takes really time yeah, to be comfortable in this position because the bones are actually yeah, binding and crossing, and um, this will inevitably uh, put pressure on them. Um, the half Padmasana, on the other hand, yeah, since the whole of your leg is resting over um, the bottom one, it's more relaxed and comfortable and it's easy to adapt. Just place something there you know, to keep the knees elevated and supported as well. All right, Swastikasana is the other one. I've given tutorials about the Swastikasana. You might want to have a look at them. Yeah, but in a nutshell, you place one leg inside. Yeah, and the other one under is like the Siddhasana, but we don't press the heel under the um, in the genital region, rather, we just slide yeah, the foot out, and then the bottom foot is resting between the calf and your inner leg. Looks like the uh, Siddhasana, or the Siddhayoni Asana, but in here, see, yeah, the knee is high because the, he, the, the bottom foot is resting under that leg, and then you can just place something down there. You can do your energy channeling techniques. Good. Uh, so that's how um, helpful ways for you to prepare the joints and prepare the energetic anatomy.
as well as the yeah, you know, how to set up you know, those modifications of deep yeah sitting asana. All right, there's another one actually is the um, virasana. All right, this one yeah, but I um, I rarely do this position you know, because in here um. Although you can sit comfortably, but yeah, if you're doing it for long durations, yeah, maybe it's not ideal because um, it's quite restless, this one. So I feel like when I'm sitting cross legs, this is more yeah, light and manageable for me. Good. Good. And then, of course, it's wise to change legs. Yes, for example, you're doing a 30-minute practice. Yeah, so keep practicing. For example, you're doing your Nadi Shodhanam, just untangle, right? And then you can move around in circles, but keep the technique going. Yeah, and then just change legs. So same thing if you're doing your chanting. Yeah, but if you're doing your still, it's you know, definitely, you, know, you just have to practice your lighter side. All right. And then maybe in other days, you try to accomplish the other side too. And when the body becomes restless, yeah, you yeah, get out and resume yeah, your normal tasks. Good. Hope this one helps. And let me know if you have questions. Good luck and have a meaningful meditation. See you soon. Namaste.